We all know that Paul Revere announced that the Red Coats were coming. That's what he's known for. Yeah, those Confederates are coming. According to historian Charles Tussig, that story's been cleaned up a little bit. That actually he was just- He was drunk and disorderly. Yelling and screaming down the road, got pulled over by the Red Coats. This is part one to our brand new series, When Drinking Saved America. USA. USA, USA. So Paul Revere rode through the night announcing the Red Coats were coming. But Kira, mm-hmm. how did he know the Red Coats were coming? I thought uh, he sat along the bay like Otis Redding and saw their little ships coming through. And he was like, oh dang, I gotta go tell Thomas Jefferson and Hamilton and everyone in the room where it happened about the Red Coats coming. But how would he know they were coming into the bay? He probably just did like a prostitute and was like, I gotta air this out. I grew up believing that too, that he was just out there watching for the Redcoats and when he saw them come in, jumped on his horse and screamed through the night as if somehow that made sense. According to historian Charles Tassig, Revere embarked on the stealth mission from Charlestown to Lexington in order to warn Sam Adams and John Hancock that the British were coming. But by chance, his route took him through Medford, the rum capital of America. He was trying to go see this... This Sam Adams and this John Hancock. Oh, he was gonna go see them. The beer guy and the signature guy. The Samuel L. Adams beers. Samuel L. Jackson, it'll get you drunk. At the time, rum was Colonial America's number one commercial industry. Mm -hmm. So naturally, Revere stopped in for a brief rest at the house of Captain Isaac Hall, the leader of the local Minutemen and lead distiller of old Medford rum. Was he like Hamilton's stepfather? You know how Hamilton came from a Caribbean island? Yeah. I think that's how we got the rum because a lot of people, they're like, I don't wanna live on this island no more. And then. (laughs) Despite what Disney Plus has told you, not all of history is connected directly to Alexander Hamilton. That's Disney. They only tell the truth. That's it, girls. No more Disney TV for a while. In the middle of his job, he says, F it. I know this guy. I'm going through the town anyway. And you know, back then, they are just like, yeah, they gave me this job. Am I really going to do it? Are they going to know about it? It's not like they were online and saw their little green teams, you know, signal. He's like, I can stop off for a little bit. So you're saying his teams button was bright green. Yes. Even though he was at... Uh, old Medford Rum Tavern. You got it. By the time Revere saddled up again, he'd sampled his fair share of Captain Hall's hospitality, and I quote, he who came in a silent horseman departed a virile and ferocious crusader with a cry of defiance and not fear, end quote. Hey, this bitch came in quiet as a little camel and then left as loud as a a possum fighting a, a mongoose. Not surprisingly, Paul Revere was pulled over by the authorities, AKA the Redcoats. You can't get pulled over if you're driving something that is a living thing. So the Redcoats detained Paul Revere for an hour before releasing him. So it was actually Revere's drunken caterwauling that aroused Adams and Hancock at about 4.30 in the morning only half an hour before fighting broke out on Lexington Green. Paul Revere is known for going through shouting, the Redcoats are coming, the Redcoats are coming, that actually he was just a drunken mess, yelling and screaming down the road, got pulled over. He was disorderly, drunk and disorderly. Yeah. And everyone's like, oh my gosh, look at it, it's the the cool guy. It woke everybody up. He was so drunk and so disorderly. Mm -hmm. And as they looked out their windows, they're like, Oh shit, there are a ton of Redcoats here. Ooh, Only okay. a half an hour before the, the actual fighting broke out. Mm-hmm. So it was like literally everybody at that point, they're grabbing their hunting rifles and they're coming out because they just heard yeah. like the Redcoats are here. They're like, this is the, t- I'm not gonna find eggs today. I'm gonna go fight a bitch. Bitch, jeez. If he was a little drunken, like whatchamacallit, and no Redcoats were coming, 
then this would be a different story. I, I think there's probably many, many of those stories that were just lost in the annals of time. I don't think this is, this is Paul's first time getting ripped, <laughs> his jumping first time. on his horse, and going. This is the first time they're like, oh, Christ, it's Paul again. They open it up like, red coats. That's your lesson for today. I'm not sure what it is, but you'll find a lesson there. Is that drinking saved America? <laughs> drinking saved America. That's the lesson. I want to live in America. Drinking saves America. Who wants to live in America? <laughs> <laughs>